Hello, everyone. Had a, a few technical difficulties today. Power uh, went off, and uh, uh, I'm hoping it's working right now. Again, uh, I'd love a, an indication from our viewers that this is finally working. A little bit of wonky, uh, wonky day, what can you say? And I'm going to begin uh, by uh, talking about uh, whoever is signing on. I see the people now joining. Let me know that the audio is good, please. Uh, I heard that it wasn't happening and that we did certainly lose our last uh, broadcast. Looking for someone to comment on the audio. I watched uh, these young uh, kids uh, on Miami Beach uh, saying, well, they're not going to be concerned about the coronavirus. After all, they've been planning spring break for two weeks. So I think that uh, uh, I'm listening. Good. Oh, audio good. Thank goodness. Great. It's meant to be. So I think that the decisions that young people are making may not be necessarily uh, good for them, good for us, older people. Uh, we know that they can be carriers. We've got a lot to talk about today in terms of the idea of when you are finally virus-free. Some really uh, eyebrow-raising information has come to us. And I see everybody's coming back now that we've had a few uh, glitches. Thank you for that. Um, where we're going to start is an announcement by the CDC, published in the New York Times. Let me read to you. A CDC data showing that nearly 40% of patients sick enough to be hospitalized were aged 20 to 54, meaning younger people are being hospitalized. And you know, you might say, well, I, I can't understand how that could be. I mean, these are America's young kids. They're, they're healthy. Why would they get coronavirus and have to be hospitalized? Well, here's the point, A that Americans' youth are not necessarily as healthy as in other countries. You know, we rank around 46th or 47th in uh, health care in the world. It's just the statistic. We have exceedingly high rates of adolescent uh, 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 um, obesity, diabetes in teenagers. And, you know, certainly a lot of this is diet-related and lifestyle-related as well. But look, uh, we're going to learn in just a little bit that obesity and, and uh, that weight may well uh, be a powerful factor as it relates to risk for uh, having a serious consequence related to having uh, COVID-19 infection. Forty percent of these patients are sick enough to be hospitalized are aged 20 to 54. You know, and a certain percentage of them are going to need to be in the intensive care unit on a ventilator and that's going to be something that just may not be available very, very soon, uh, as in the next week or so. So to see kids out on the beach because it's spring break, that's a, that's a behavior that's based upon acting from the self-interest here and now, impulsivity, and we've got to rein kids in. With all due respect, we need to bring the adult back to the equation here and make some rule changes to get these kids inside and isolated from others. It's very, very serious. We added so many cases today, uh, it's breathtaking. It can hardly keep up. So I'm going to give you the link for that. I'd like you to take a look at that. Um, this is, um, I'll post this now. This is from the CDC talking about uh, the increased risk uh, in, uh, for younger kids. Our kids are not healthy. Now, I'm going to try to unify today all of these ideas about um, why younger American ki uh, kids are having more serious problems, why ibuprofen might be a bad idea, uh, and uh, even why some of the underlying medical conditions uh, may pose a significant risk for having a serious outcome. We next move to the ibuprofen question. I'm going to post a link uh, that we just uh, posted on drperlmutter.com about this because I think a lot of people are taking ibuprofen. And if you want to text uh, some of your friends, uh, remind them that we've come back on that. This might be a good time to do that. We've got a lot of information. Um, people are getting a lot of myalgias, headaches, uh, other types of pain, taking ibuprofen for it. It looks like, uh, according to BMJ, and I'm going to give you the article, COVID-19 ibuprofen should not be used for managing symptoms, uh, say doctors and scientists. Is it true or not true? I would not now be taking ibuprofen. Why do younger Americans have a, a worse outcome now? I'm going to unify all of these ideas in a little bit. But, um, you know, let me just preface it all by saying 
that what do we depend on for uh, good immunity and for keeping inflammation in balance? Think about it. What have we been talking about for the past decade? What we've been talking about is the gut bacteria, the microbiome. And we know that there's a relationship between weight gain, between type 2 diabetes, uh, and changes in the gut bacteria, i.e. changes in immunity, increased inflammation. We know that ibuprofen is associated with significant changes in the gut bacteria. I'll give you uh, some uh, data on that as well. And we know that uh, you know, there are some inflammatory issues that are increased in risk in people that are chronically taking ibuprofen or, or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, like having a stroke, like getting Alzheimer's disease, both of which are inflammatory conditions. We know that ibuprofen changes the gut bacteria, like proton pump inhibitors do. So um, what I'm uh, going to do later this evening for everybody is I've already created a video uh, with slides showing the science, uh, talking about this interesting relationship that now might explain why younger people in America are having worse outcomes. Why, to this date, there has not been a single case reported in Haiti we will talk about something called the hygiene hypothesis, whereby people who have lived these uh, sterile lives like most of us have, as opposed to people living in sub-Saharan Africa, where the risk, rather the uh, incidence of uh, coronavirus infection this time around is very, very low. And uh, as mentioned in Haiti, no cases. So maybe the hygiene hypothesis is coming back to haunt us in terms of our sense of germs and sterility. The hygiene hypothesis proposed by Strachan back in the 1980s in a publication in the British Medical Journal might be a good thing to, uh, to, uh, to Google. It's really interesting, proposing that um, lack of childhood exposure to things like bacteria and even helminths, things like uh, worms, uh, may be the reason we have so much allergy and so much immune issues in uh, children these days. Now, I want to move on, and again, I'm going to get you the link to, or we'll actually we'll post it here on uh, Facebook and also on YouTube. I want to move on to something that's very, very important. Um, and um, is it published yet? Not yet. Um, and that is, when is it safe to bring people back into your house uh, who have had coronavirus? Now they're feeling better. Are they okay to come home? And uh, I'd like to say, well, you know, a few days of no fever, everything should be good, especially if they can be tested. Um, can I turn up the volume? How is my volume? I need to know. Still too low to hear. Darn. Let me, uh, let me, I'll, I'll use uh, hmm, two microphones. Maybe that'll help because maybe this is one that's initialized, but I don't know. Tell me, folks, if that seems better. I don't know. Uh, Okay, it may be better. I'm, we had everything uh, shut down, so uh, there you go. Need to know, uh, James, why don't you text me back? Let me know how the audio is now. Uh, sounds really low. Uh, okay, anyway, somebody text me back, let me know. This is a very, very important uh, study, and I'm going to send it to you right now. Um, yeah, I need to know how the volume is. Anyway. And this is a study published by the Journal of the American Medical Association. What did they find? They've, volume is good. Yes, uh, we've had, uh, who knows why the power went out. So thank you. Um, and it, hel it helps us get a little bit of a handle. Didn't help much. I'm not sure what to do, folks. As, uh, okay. It helps us get a bit of a handle. I'll try to talk louder on when people are ready to come back into the house. I'm going to post it for you right now. And okay, thank you, Jonathan. I got your text. Um, and I want you all to look at this because this is very, very important. And here we go. What the, the study tells us, uh, it uh, followed four medical professionals. They were young guys, 30 to 36 years, six years old. They developed COVID. They were in China and they were all uh, uh, diagnosed with uh, blood testing, rather uh, throat testing, nasal swabs, treated with Tamiflu, uh, and then they were considered that they had recovered when they had two tests over two days that were negative. Okay? These are proven cases of 
a coronavirus, and now they are tested and they're testing negative. They were quarantined at home for five days and then retested. They continued to undergo throat swabs for the coronavirus after five days for up to 13 days post-recovery. And here's what is fairly interesting about that, not fairly interesting. The results showed that every test between day five and 13 again was positive for the virus. The quote from the journal article, uh, these findings suggest that at least a proportion of the recovered patients may still be virus carriers. I don't know uh, how to interpret that uh, in terms of what that means. It was done back in February. Uh, when do we know people are safe to come in the home? Uh, that's a, a, a good question, I think, to ask in light of this JAMA study. Uh, the next study that I would like to um, talk about is that it lists uh, a study from, B, uh, from the British uh, journals, Manchester Evening News, talking about having a high body mass index, being overweight, as being uh, among the highest risk as it relates to uh, coronavirus infection. Um, those at increase have been advised to particularly stringent in following social distancing measures. New guidance lists overweight people, BMI greater than 40, among the very highest risk for coronavirus. Is it because of the body fat and the inflammation that that produces? Is it because of their changed uh, microbiome, their gut bacteria that correlates with, um, uh, okay, that correlates with obesity? Don't know. Um, so this is a very interesting thing to consider because overweight uh, or obesity, along with emphysema, bronchitis, heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, um, Parkinson's, um, problems with uh, the spleen like sickle cell disease, etc., anything that weakens the immune system will likely be at higher risk, that's for sure. So um, the, uh, what I'm, I'm saying is that uh, how does that relate to the microbiome? If you look at maps that look at rates of obesity in the world, and you look at maps that show, and we're gonna, I'll share that in, in a minute. Uh, you look at maps that show where coronavirus is most active, you'll see a very strong correlation. So it doesn't mean, let's say, that obesity is making uh, the situation worse, although I suspect it is. It might mean that the issue here is the microbiome, the microbiome that is related to obesity, that is related to diabetes, related to heart disease, Alzheimer's, uh, and all of the other uh, situations that seem to be associated with higher risk. Again, why are there no cases in Haiti? The reason I mention that is I did visit Haiti after their devastating earthquake in 2010, and I was very taken by how the patients that we were treating, some of whom lost arms or legs, uh, nonetheless, when we would uh, do surgery on these patients, um, they weren't getting antibiotics. They were outside in tents provided by UNICEF, and we didn't see much infection. You know, And I was very, very impressed with their immune systems. And it gets back to this notion of the hygiene hypothesis. So what we've done is we've created a movie for you, a, a video rather, that we will post in, in a little bit on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. And I'd like you to take a look at that because I think what I am calling for is for our microbiome research colleagues like University of California, San Diego, uh, you know who I'm talking to, uh, we need to start sequencing uh, microbiomes from uh, controls and from individuals who are at, uh, seem to be getting the uh, uh, infection and see if there's any difference. Hopefully that might lead us to a place of being able to understand uh, how these changes might be remedied. Uh, that I think might take many, many months, but you know what? Every journey begins with the first step. Uh, having said that, let's take some uh, let's take some questions. Aspirin, ibuprofen, are, and uh, yeah, um, okay, again, brand names include, thank you for that post, uh, Sandy Rodriguez. Again, the non-steroidals are what people seem to be um, concerned about, and I hear that my uh, volume is still very low. I don't know why that is, uh, but um, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I think I'm going to leave this then since it is the way it is. The others are saying volume is perfect. Uh, okay, good. 
Uh, many people commenting on the on the volume. I got that. Okay. Uh, so let me just answer a couple of questions. I'm going to tell you I will be, I think tomorrow, on uh, 700 Club Interactive uh, with Gordon Robertson and uh, going to be answering a lot of questions about uh, latest developments. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Maureen Danielle is telling us about Tamiflu side, effect, uh, side effects. No drug interaction is necessarily going to be... Um, going to be without risk, right? We always look at the uh, risk-benefit ratios. Uh, sauna has proven highly effective in killing the virus. Uh, I think it would probably kill the virus in terms of uh, killing the virus on surfaces. How effective it is for humans, we just don't know. Um, uh, Lee uh, Caretis is talking about NAC as, as possibly helping stop the virus. I don't know that we have uh, studies on that. Uh, specifically, so I can't say. Um, there you go. What is your professional opinion about taking ibuprofen during symptom stages? I am not going to take it uh, until we learn otherwise. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, I'm um, I'm allergic to quinine. Would there be any uh, problem taking the hydroxyl form? I don't know the answer to that. I would say that the uh, the preliminary research shows that hydroxy uh, is a, uh, a better form, uh, but we see, and we see that it is going to be fast-tracked. Uh, anyway, I think that people seem like, anyway, they're hearing me better with headphones. I'm going to read a little poem and uh, jump off because I'm not sure, folks, that the volume is good. Uh, power went out uh, in this area. Um, what can I tell you? I, I will definitely come back tomorrow and give it another shot. Let me read to you uh, a poem. Uh, by Mitchell Browder. Mitchell, if you're listening, it is called Paint. Everybody ready? Here we go. I picked up a brush and 80 bucks worth of paint. After a few tries, I know that kind of artist I ain't. So I will paint a picture in your head with the words that I write instead. I'll start with the sky. Use your imagination. Blue, blue like the first day of summer vacation. Next is the grass, tall and green. The breeze makes it wave and the sun makes it sheen. Just beyond the grass and the sand dunes and just above that, a seagull looms. The air is sweet with the scent of the ocean and the coconut in my suntan lotion. The sun is warm and bright and I have to squint that little boy's kite. I crest the dune, and there is the sea. The waves crash and foam and softly roar at me. I wade in. It is quite cold. Now let's sign this in the sand where the waves hit the shore and the sea meets the air and the land. Now step back and look. What a wonderful view. And the canvas can go wherever because it's in you. Thank you for that. Uh, apologies for the technical issues today. Uh, make sure that uh, we'll get those squared away as best we can. And I will talk to you guys all tomorrow. And um, tomorrow, I don't know at what time, but I'll be on the 700 Club Interactive and then back on the regular program, I think on Tuesday of next week. But of course, um, We'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Watch for the post later tonight for the video about the microbiome and what you can do. And we'll get that to YouTube as well. Bye for now.